you for where you're going to be. And if you want to be better than you are today and do something even more significant in tomorrow, I promise if you watch this and see what a little short man who wasn't even saved did and apply it to your life, it will change you forever. Here's a man that was shorter. He was shorter than everybody else. And it said that he ran before. And I have to think about it because naturally, did you know my wife has a, large, a longer inseam than I do? I know it doesn't look that way, but her legs are tremendously long. And that becomes even more real when we decide to go running. And the only time I really even like to run is if something's chasing me. And even then, I'll only run so far until I say, okay, let's just do it. Come on, let's get it over with. And I, 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 this really become real to me because I found myself having to take twice as many steps just to keep up with her because her legs are so much more longer than mine. So for me to understand, here's a man that was short in stature. He would have to work twice as hard just to keep up with the crowd. But the story didn't say he kept up. It said that he ran ahead. So how much harder would he have to work? It, it, and it, and it, puts to, it puts away the mindset that Christianity is something like a microwave, that we can come in here and pay our tithes like the lottery and wait for the dinging button to go off, and then we're there. It's going to take a little bit of work. Are you hearing me? And if you really want to be successful and you really want to know and be at the place where Jesus is going, it's going to take not just twice as much work, but it's going to take two to three times as much work, if not more, for you to understand. It's going to take ultimate sacrifice. I have people calling me. I had a guy call me last week, and he was mad and embittered because he said, you know, I could be doing what you're doing right now. He said, I can do that. Why don't you just let me come and preach? Let me evangelize at your church. And I, if, one day I'll tell you the conversation we had because it was just that good. But it was amazing because here's a man that didn't understand how much it takes to keep up. Because it's easy to look at runners like my cousin Carlos here that just got second in the, in the Varman Half Marathon, by the way. And I, I, he brought the trophy and said, keep it till you get your own. But it, it's easy to watch somebody run. Have you ever watched the, the Olympic sprinters and see them? Man, it looks easy. They're just doing it like it's nothing. But have you ever got on the track and put a stopwatch in your hand and saw how slow motion you really are? It's easy to watch somebody do something. But what you don't see is the time it takes to train and prepare and the actual physical work it takes to get yourself to that position. Somebody say position. Because it's all about positioning. Here's a man that worked twice as hard to get there than everybody else, but he got there. And the amazing thing is that blows my mind is how that he would know where Jesus was going and he wasn't even a Christian. Does that tell you anything? And it said when he got there, he saw a sycamore tree. Somebody say a sycamore tree. Did you know sycamore trees were not native to the land that this particular story was written in? And the sycamore tree actually originated in central to South Africa. That this particular tree had low, sturdy branches that was perfect for a short person to climb up in. These are the trees that you see that the lions and the cheetahs and everything laying on in the movies and in the pictures. These are those short trees. They don't grow very high, but they're short. And they originated in central to South Africa. So it amazes me because, and even these trees can take 30 to 60 years to even grow just a few feet in height. Yes. So I can begin to understand how amazing God is. Because he thought about Zacchaeus before Zacchaeus was ever born or before he ever come along. And he sent somebody somewhere in Africa to take the seed of the sycamore tree and put it in their pocket and journey halfway up the continent to get on the, the Nile River in Egypt and float all the way up into the promised land and plant this tree. And then it took 30 to 60 years for this tree to even develop to the point that it even had some height for Zacchaeus to use it. Does it blow your mind how great God is that, he, that you're not a, an accident or an incident? but he thought about you before you were ever spoken into existence. He thought about you. He planned the course of your very life. That's why nothing takes God by surprise. You can't fool God. You can't mix him up. You can't fake him out. You can't wake up and God says, oh, well, what am I going to do today? It doesn't work like that. But God took time because he loves you to plan and make everything work in your favor. When he got there, there was a position he was looking for, but he couldn't get to. But he found a tree.
tree to help them get there. And if I just really had some help to start talking about the tree, because you and I were in a place of life where Christ realized that we had to have a tree. And he said, oh, you know what? I'm going to go back 2,000 years before they're even living or breathing and plant a tree up on top of Calvary that I'm going to climb up for them just like Zacchaeus climbed up. Christ climbed up the tree. And through the process, he laid down his life and died. But he said, I'm more than that. He said, I'm going to raise it back up. And he raised it back up and said, because I hung on the tree, cursed is a man that hangs on the tree. You don't have to be cursed. You don't have to live a life less than. You don't have to have low self-esteem issues. You don't have to be locked up in a life of mediocrity. But you can step beyond that because I planted a tree for you before you ever got there that grew to fruition, that grew to the place. So when it came time for you to get in position, it was there. I love Hallelujah. He got up in the tree and it said Jesus was walking by and remember reading it, it said he came to the place. I made you say it. He came to the place. And when he came to the place, he stopped and he looked up and he saw and he talked. Now this is interesting to me because it said he came to the place, which tells me there is a place we have to get to. There is a place we have to get to. There is a position. There's a, uh, there's a perfect place, a perfect position we all have to get to. And only we can understand where God is calling us to be. I found that times I'm most successful is when I get into the place. When I'm in position. And this is what I love about the story. It's here the masses are talking to Jesus. But when one man who wasn't even saved got in the right position, Jesus started talking to him. I'm sure you pray every day. When's the last time God was talking to you? If we're on, when was the last time that God spoke an audible word to you and said, hey, I'm coming to your house? When's the last? Because if you haven't had that happen, you're probably not in the right place yet. And God is calling us to get into position, to get into place. He told Zacchaeus when he spoke to him, he said, come down, I'm going to your house. So God gave him clear direction and even told him where he was going. Why? Because Zacchaeus took the time to seek and find out where God was going. And isn't that amazing? If we ever find out where God is going, he'll tell us where to go. I wish that would set somebody free and just set some troubled minds at ease because it's not all that difficult. You find out where God is going, he'll talk to you, he'll speak to you when you get in the right place, and at the end result is he will tell you where to go. And the great thing about it is Jesus didn't go home with any of the Christians. He went home with a sinner man all because his heart was at the place. Can somebody say the place? I believe if we could ever get our heart to the place, if we could ever get our mind to the place, if we could ever get our physical body in this place, that God will begin to speak to us and talk to us and through the process he's going to go home with us in other words i'm not looking for a blessing that feels good here and when i go outside those doors i lose it and fall back into depression and fall back into stress and strife and living a life less than i'm looking for something i can take home with me because i need something to live with me i need jesus with me every hour of every day coming in here and raising my hands and feeling his presence does not cut it from me i need something more i need something tangible i need something that's living that's breathing that's active that talks Talks back to me when I'm having some trouble. That could be my marriage counselor. That can be my friend when no one else is calling me. That could be the person that sticks closer to me than any brother. Now, is there anybody that needs what I'm talking about? Because if you do, you should raise your hand and say, Oh God, help me get in the place. Help me find my place. Help me get to the place, God, where my mind can hear from you. Where my ears are unclogged and not blocked by the things of this world. But God, where I can understand your word. And immediately when this happened, all the Christians got upset. I said, Jesus, do you have any clue who you're even talking to? But they said the same thing to a man named Todd Bentley who decided to have revival in Lakeland, Florida. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I would encourage you to look that up on the internet, YouTube it, turn on DirecTV on the God channel, and see here's a man with holes in his ears the size of quarters and piercings and his arms covered in tattoos like shirt sleeves, but the power of God has fallen because somebody learned to get in the place. And immediately all the Christian networks, because they bumped off all the other television or they bumped off all the other TV shows of all the big mega churches and started airing because here's the problem. We've got too many people that are professionals on things they can't manifest. We've got books that's wrote on healing by people that's never seen anybody healed. I knew I wasn't going to get any help, but I'm going to say it anyway. we got books written on prosperity about people that paid themselves out of debt. If you are really blessed, pay me out of debt. I knew I wasn't going to get any help with that. 
I'm looking. At, I'm not about to sound professional on anything until I learn about it and I can manifest it. And here's a man that didn't look the part. He didn't look right. And everyone else religious got mad because he was manifesting something that they thought they had a degree in. And God is looking for some people. Doesn't ma- and this might mess up somebody's theology. Doesn't matter if you look the part or act the part or have it together on the outside or on the inside. I believe that even if you've got sin in your life, that God can still sit down on you and use you to the place to 